Hi, everyone. So we are doing multiplication, division of fractions, and then ratios as well today. Uh, so let's say multiplying fractions. To multiply fractions, write the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. Then simplify the resulting fraction if possible. So a over b times c over d is equal to a times c over b times d. Again, provided that b and d are not 0. So directions, multiply the fractions and simplify to the lowest terms. Write the answer as an improper fraction when necessary. So what this implies is that you just multiply straight across in the numerator and straight across in the denominator. So you just have 2 times 4, which is 8, and then 3 times 9, which is 27. And that's it. Here, notice that you have a negative times a negative, which gives us a positive. So we have a positive 33 over 20. And then remember, I think it was like, maybe it was last week. Remember, anything can be written over 1. So this is 12 over 1 times negative 1 seventh. So the 12 times the negative 1 is negative 12. And then 1 times 7 is 7. That's really it. So here we can even reduce before we do the multiplication. So for example, like I know that seven goes into both of these. So seven into 14 is twice and seven goes into 21 three times. So we can do that. And then we could even say, oh, well three goes into 15 five times. So now, before we even do any of the multiplication, we can say that this is 2 times 2 times 1 fifth. Oh, but what's anything over itself? 1. Perfect. This is 1 times 1 fifth, which is 1 fifth. Nice. Here, we could even do the same. We could say that it is negative 5 times 2, which is 10, over 20 or negative one half when we simplify, right? Because 10 can go to 20 twice. Or say, okay, well, five goes into 24 times. So this becomes the one. So this is then negative two fourths, which is also negative one half. So either way, totally fine. Doesn't matter. Does not matter at all. Let's see here, 16 and 8, if we reduce first, that's once, that's twice. Let's see, 28 and 49, both by 7. So 4 goes into 28 7 times, or 7 goes into 28 4 times, excuse me. And 7 times 7 is 49. So multiplying the 4 times 1 in the numerator, right, we're just going across. And multiplying the 2 times 7 with the 14. And we could have even said, okay, well, we can reduce at this point, but we can also reduce here and say, well, 4 and 14 are both even, so let's reduce by 2 and say 2 sevenths. Here we go. Ta -da! Here we have 4m over 25 times 5 over 2m. If we just go straight into multiplying across, you multiply just the numbers with numbers and the letters with letters, if they're like letters. So that would be 20m equals 50m. Oops, excuse me, wrote my line wrong. And what's anything over itself? When we're looking at these m's, just one, just one. Let's see, and these can both be reduced by 10. So that just becomes a two and a five. So there we go, just two fifths. Yay! Okay, I want you to pause the video and try eight and nine by yourself. Whenever you're ready, just come back. Okay, so here, let's try just reducing before we do anything. So we have an X in the numerator, X in the denominator y in the numerator, y in the denominator. And then, let's see, 
48 and 36, six goes into both of them. That's eight times here and six times here. 11 can go into 33 and two, three and two times respectively. So let's see, we can keep reducing if we want to because, well, let's just keep going. So this is the negative three times six, which is 18 over eight times two, which is 16, which both can be reduced by two. So that is negative nine eighths, which is an improper fraction, mind you. Okay, and nine. So if we have 35 over 15, because I like to reduce, because I like working with smaller numbers personally. If I want to reduce by five, five goes into 35 seven times. I think of like a clock, right? You're just thinking like the seven at the dial, the seven's 35 minutes. It's my weird brain. And then 15 three times. Let's see, 18 divided by two is nine, 14 divided by two is seven. Look, I have two Bs, let me move my hand, two Bs here, one B here. So I can get rid of this B and one of those Bs. I have three A here and two A's here. So that can reduce like so. The A over three over A, to me, A cubed over A squared means that Two of the A's can disappear. We're just left with one A. So now we just have nine times seven, which is uh, 63 A, because the A's staying there. And then seven times three, which is 21 B. Yay. Oh, we can keep going um, because three can go into both of them. So if I divide by three, Oh, and seven can go into both of them. Let's see. Oh yeah, because let's see. Oh my goodness, how much fun. Let's say we don't do this part. Because here, if I see seven and seven, so that's going to reduce to one. And nine and three, that's going to reduce to three. So really, we just have three A over B. Oh, how fun. Yay. Okay, reciprocals. Two numbers whose product is one are reciprocals of each other. The chart below pre presents a procedure to find the reciprocal of a fraction. So finding the reciprocal of a fraction. To find the reciprocal of a non-zero fraction, interchange the numerator and denominator of the fraction. If A and B are non-zero numbers, then the reciprocal of A over B is B over A. This is because A over B times B over A is equal to one. So if we find the reciprocal of all of these, we you literally just flip it and you keep the sign. So seven over two, or excuse me, two over seven becomes seven halves. Then we have negative five over 24. Remember this is technically negative four over one. So what's the reciprocal of it? Yeah, just negative one fourth. And here 13 is kind of the wonky one. Because if we flip it, what happens? we get 49 over zero, which is not good. So here the reciprocal does not exist. Perfect, great job y'all. Okay, so the reason why we bring up reciprocals is for division of fractions. So in general, to divide two non-zero numbers, we can multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. This is how we divide a fraction. So dividing fractions. To divide two fractions, multiply the dividend, the first fraction, by the reciprocal of the divisor, the second fraction. The process to divide fractions can be written symbolically as, so A over B divided by, oops, excuse me, C over D is equal to A over B times D over C, right? So you just take the reciprocal, you just, Flip the, you just flip the, the fraction. So let's practice. Sorry, my division signs didn't print off. 
So dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay. Multiply by the reciprocal, same thing. That's what we mainly do. So 3 sixteenths times 8 eighteenths is now what we want. Okay, because we want to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Again, I like to reduce before I actually do the multiplication, but you do you. So 3 goes into 18 six times. 8 goes into 16 two times. So these are ones. So thus, we're just left with 1 twelfths. So negative 5 elevenths divided by negative 4 ninths. Again, we still have the double negative, which means we have a positive in the end. But we now have, instead of division, the multiplication of negative 5 elevenths times negative 9 fourths. Okay, so now I look 5 cannot go into 4, 9 cannot go into 11 and five can't go into 11, nine not into four. So we just multiply across. Remember negative times a negative is a positive. Five times nine is 45. 11 times four is 44. Perfect. Oh, this one printed off all wrong. Sorry, we we'll, won't worry about that one. 17, again, same thing. We just want to divide, instead of dividing by two fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So this is negative 9mn over 4 times 32 over negative 5n. That's it. Let's see. So 3 goes both into 9 3 times and 15 5 times. Let's see, 4 can go into 32 eight times. So the four is a one. Again, we have the negative times a negative, which is the positive. So it is three times eight, which is 24 over five. And then what's happening here with the letters? Do we have anything that's the same in the numerator and the denominator? You betcha, we have that N. So M is hanging out with us and that's it. Yay. Okay, I want you to pause the video and try 18 on your own. Okay, so let's just say we just go straight into it. So 20A squared times B cubed over B times 4A, so notice here on the right is the reciprocal. Here on the left is the original fraction. So we have a squared over a. So that means 1a can go away. I have a b over a b cubed. So 1b can go away. So the b cubed becomes b squared. And then 20 can go into 4 five times. Or excuse me, 4 goes into 20 five times. Pardon me. So we're then just left with five times a times b squared because everything from the denominator reduced out with something from the numerator. Yay! Awesome job. Okay, so that is the basics of multiplication and division. So now we're gonna have some applications. So how many fourths are in seven halves. So if I want to split this into fourths, that means I want to divide by four. So if I want to take this and divide, excuse me, if I want to take this and divide by four, that means, let's see. Oh, well, I want to do it multiplying by one. So if I have seven halves, oops, excuse me, two over two, no, that would be changing it into fourths. Sorry, all my brain needs to work for just a second. Yeah, so I want to divide by four. So that is seven halves 
multiplied by one fourth, so that is seven eighths. That feels weird. I'll come back to it. Circle back to it. We'll circle back. My brain's not working. I apologize. Let's move on to 20. A high school budget was $17,859,030 last year. If 421st of this amount came from donations, how much money was donated to the high school? So that means of the 21 pieces, four of them were of don donations. So we're just going to multiply the two numbers together. Keep in mind that's over one times four divided by 21. Let me grab my calculator. So seventeen eight five nine zero three zero. Oops, zero three zero. Now I can say times the fraction four divided by twenty one. That is what three million four hundred one thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. Yay! Cool. So Maria's home. Home loan is a $135,000. If she has paid off two twenty-fifths of the loan, how much does she still owe? So if I've paid off that much, that means that, well, I have, what, 23 and 25ths left to go. Because what is, if 25 over 25, excuse me, is equal to one or a hundred percent, if you would. Then two minus 25 means I have 23 left to pay off, okay? So we can do it this way, where I have 135, 100, 135,000, remember over one times 23, 25 or I can do the 135, the 135,000, or one times two twenty-fifths, and then subtract. So let's see. I've got 135,000, 135,000 times 23 divided by 25. So that is $124,200 left to pay. If I do it the other way, sorry, my scooch. If I do it the other way, then I have 135, 135,000 times two divided by 25, which is equal to $10,800. So remember, this is what she's paid. The total loan was 135, so now I need to subtract. So 135,000 minus the 10,800. Sorry, let me make sure you can see all this stuff happening. 135,000 minus the 10,800 is the same number. That 124,200. So either way you want to do it is totally fine with me. Perfect. Yay. Let's see. Okay. So how many fourths are in seven halves? See, if I do seven halves, that means that I have, uh, what? See. Oh, I'm gonna have to come back to this one. My brain's just not wanting to work. Sorry about that. 